Hello and welcome to the Lechuga channel where I like talking about literature among other things. So today I am reviewing Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Now I do want to preface this by saying that these types of books aren't ones that particularly appeal to me directly. Book Lovers and books similar to it like The Love Hypothesis and The Hating Game are these rom-com type novels that have become extremely popular over the course of the popularity of book talking both TikTok and Instagram. In fact, the rom-com slash book erotica industry is by far the biggest one in the literary world and it's an industry about more than a billion dollars if I'm correct. And the thing that's important to note about these books is that they're almost always meant to appeal to women and there's nothing wrong with that. So going into this review, I will be conscious that I'm not the target audience and if you are the target audience, then just, just take my opinions with a grain of salt every once in a while. However, that's not to say that I don't read these kinds of rom-coms just in a very ironic way. I find them to be very funny, especially with how exaggerated they can be at times. Nothing against the authors or the people who do appeal to them unironically, but hey, we all find our own enjoyment in things. In the case of book lovers, on the other hand, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this one. I've read a lot of these rom-coms in the past and what I find funny about them is that most of the time they have these really exaggerated characters in these extremely unrealistic scenarios where they put the love interest in that just causes for these really bizarre relationships that don't really make sense to me. But book lovers, on the other hand, feels like a subversion of these tropes. Right from the opening page, it's clear that Emily Henry isn't gonna be following a lot of the traditional structures and cliches that I've seen in these books so many times. It starts off by giving this perfect representation of what all of these uh, tropes and cliches are about. There's a businesswoman who lives in New York who doesn't know the meaning of Christmas and needs to go to this small town place where she will meet the hunk who is gonna show her the true meaning of life or whatever. It also reveals how there's the also the initial love interest who the protagonist abandons for the small town romance. This goes on for a pretty long while and you definitely start to grow a little curious as to where all of this is going and then in a very funny ironic twist at the end the protagonist Nora Stevens reveals that it's she the one who's always the businesswoman who's left at the end of the novel. She even says that she's been dumped like four different times or something by guys who were normal businessmen and then went off to a small town to fall in love with some random girl they met in like four days. And I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. You get a very good idea of what the actual book is like and what the main character Nora Stevens is like in these few opening chapters. Book Lovers isn't a book that's gonna follow all of the tropes and cliches we've seen so many times in these books, instead it seeks to subvert them in ways that are both entertaining and actually pretty unironically funny. Even the initial setup and plot of the book is subverting expectations because Nora Stevens, yes, she's a businesswoman, yes, she's going to this small town, but she's not doing it to find the meaning of Christmas. She's not doing it to get some small town romance. In fact, she's doing it because she wants to get closer to her sister who she's grown detached from over the last couple years. It shows that the normal morals we see at the end of these books are things that she already knows. Which makes for a really fascinating character. And I think that's the thing I like most about book lovers. The characters. A lot of these romances have complete non-protagonists who are just meant to be a sort of blank slate for the reader to inject themselves into. But Nora Stevens is not that. She's a fully fleshed out character whose life goes way past that of the man she falls in love with. Her story isn't about falling in love, her story is about trying to rekindle her relationship with her sister. And when the book inevitably makes fun of all of these tropes and cliches that we've seen so many times in these books, she even acknowledges them and makes quippy remarks of them. The same thing goes for all the other characters. Charlie Lastra, her main love interest, is also a great character with his own flaws and ideologies that makes him a separate character to Nora, but the lives of the two characters aren't inherently linked with each other. Both of them could be living their own separate lives and still have their own unique stories. Same thing with Nora's sister and a lot of the other characters we meet throughout the book. And I think that's the highest praise I can give book lovers. It has these genuine characters and this genuine story with actual emotion to it that feels a lot more mature than what we get from a lot of these 
very tween romances, especially with long-winded conversations which explore a lot of each of the characters and what their beliefs are. The dialogue is really solid, the conflicts are really solid, the characters are really solid. And all of these conflicts and stories are explored in these really well done scenes of dialogue and comedic moments that I found to be genuinely funny. Now, with that said, I do have my fair share of complaints with the book. First of all, I felt like a lot of its seems started to wear off about halfway through. You know, Nora arrives to the small town, she finds her love interest, they have all of these conversations, she tries to fix her relationship with her sister, all of this makes for a really effective first act. But by the time you reach halfway through the book, it just feels like he has nothing left to say. There's a lot of really random and arbitrary problems that the characters face, which in my opinion were both uninteresting or extremely predictable. Even though the book sets out to subvert all of these tropes and expectations, it ironically falls to the exact same tropes, like having two characters get a room to explain each other's backstories, or having some random love interest who you know is not gonna go anywhere. There's even a lot of really bizarre plot points introduced uh, two thirds of the way into the book, which were a little weird to me and I thought were a little out of place. The prose as well, I think it's a little mixed. There's a lot of metaphors, and I mean a lot of weird metaphors that don't really add anything to the story, nor do they really make sense. Not to mention that the book borders a lot on a lot of exposition that's completely unnecessary. I mean, the char main character Nora Stevens is just gonna stop everything that she's doing so that she can explain the plot to you and explain things that you kind of already know. It can be really irritating to have to sit down and read all of these parts when you just want the story to keep moving. All of this then leads to an ending where it feels like everything just kind of solved itself. There's no real struggle, there's no real consequences, in fact there's no real point to anything. It feels like all of the rewards were just handed to the main characters with no real struggle or pain to get them. The entire ending can be summed up as that one scene in Birdemic where the characters are clapping for a minute straight. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some great news. Our board of directors has agreed to the acquisition of NCT Software by Oracle Corporation for a billion dollars! Now, with all of those criticisms, I still have to admit that Book Lovers was a really pleasant surprise. The characters are solid. The plot points are solid, there's a real passion behind everything, and it never really feels like everything that's happening is arbitrary or unrealistic or even immature. Emily Henry definitely has my respect for writing something like this and I will most certainly be checking out her other two books eventually. If you like these types of rom-coms and want to see a more mature romance developed, then this is definitely a book you should check out. It has great characters, and though it can be a little hard to read sometimes, I still overall enjoyed my time with it, and I do recommend it. Well that's gonna be it for this video. Have you read Book Lovers? What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, let me know what you thought about this review as well. If you want to see more book reviews in the future, then make sure to subscribe to the Lechuga channel and ring the bell to be notified of new uploads. And while you're there, hit that like button too. And hey, if you liked this video, why not watch another one? I have a playlist on screen right now with all of my literary talk videos. Well, that's gonna be about it. See ya.